there's got to be one. Oh. Every single time. There's not a time I film a wrap up and try to take this thumbnail that they don't go everywhere. Okay. I got them all right in front of me. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my May wrap up and my June TBR. I actually am like in awe that it's already June, that we are in the sixth month of this year. Like it's seriously like time is going way too fast. I need it to slow down a little bit. I need it to just like calm down a little. I want to enjoy summer. I want it to just be like stretched out. And these months have been flying by. I'm going to be talking about, obviously, the books that I read in May, my rating, my review, how I felt about all of them, and then I'm going to give you the books I want to read in June. I don't have too many. I, I need some inspiration for my June TBR. So at the end, let me know your guys' June TBR and give me some books you think I should read over the summer. Also, stay tuned to the end because I have a new update to my Patreon and our book club little tiers going on. First, obviously, we're going to get into the books I read and my TBR. Without further ado, let's get right into it. First book I read was Float by Kate Merchant. Marchant? so bad at names. This is actually a Wattpad story. She started it when she was younger on Wattpad and then over the years she just kept writing it and she actually published it when she was older out of college and everything. I love that story. I just love seeing how this book came to be but this is just like a perfect little YA romance found family summer read. It's basically about Waverly who lives in Antarctic- is it Antarctica or Alaska? Alaska, not Antarctica. Her parents are doing something with their job, so they send Waverly to her aunt's house in Florida. She's never been to Florida, never really been in the warm weather. She's like out of her comfort zone, but she's spending, I think, a month there until she has to go somewhere. I don't really remember, to be honest, but meets her aunt's next door neighbor, who is, I, I can never remember names, Blake. Blake is her super hot next door neighbor. They are kind of like a little bit of enemies. He kind of doesn't want to get along with or hang out with the new girl. He already has his friends and everything, but her aunt and the neighbors are like, you have to like show her around, introduce her to people, so she may makes a few friends there. She enters Blake's little friend group. It's really, really sweet. The little friend group found family, but it felt so nostalgic. I think that's why I enjoyed this so much. Like it's not a deep, crazy read, but if you want like a lighthearted little summer read, there's like a little bit of romance between her and Blake. There's her and her friends trying to figure all that out, but it's really cute. I gave it four stars just because I loved the story of the author, like her journey to writing this book. I loved just the feeling of it, the nostalgia and all of that combined. And the cover is just so cute. Just reading this on the beach, it's such a fast, quick read too. Like it's nothing crazy, but it it was really cute. Then I reread Beach Read by Emily Henry. I read this for the first time. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. I think it was two summers ago. So I thought to reread it before reading her new release, which was Happy Place. And I am so incredibly happy that I did. I ended up getting this five stars for my reread. I annotated the crap out of this book. It's so floppy and just so used up now. And I'm just, this is my prized possession of a book. If you don't know what Beach Read is, if you haven't read it, it's basically about these two authors, January and Gus. And January moves in to spend the summer at her father's little lake house beach house thing and next door is her old rival Gus. They kind of spark up this little plan to switch genres over the summer, write in each other's genres and by the end of it whoever gets published or whoever finishes first, something like that. They have a little game going on but they were back in the day rivals so you have that kind of tension going on but I feel like this was so much more than like a rom-com. Like don't go into this thinking you're gonna get a cute little rom-com. Like this is so much more. You have these two people that are just like have these pasts and things that they're that are heavy on their shoulders I guess you could say and they come together and spend this time together and kind of open up to each other and help each other out while also like that whole author thing little subplot that's going on but yeah it reads like a literary fiction book not really a romance book I think that's why I loved it so much it felt really deep and it just feels really real and raw I think I said this in the little reading vlog I read it in very tender I don't like that word but like it does feel very tender I absolutely love Gus Gus is just <sighs> has a special place in my heart. I absolutely loved this reread. It was one of my favorite reads of the year so far, which is a bold statement. Then I read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. So this is actually rom com type of book, but it has like a deeper little plot, which I really enjoyed and did not expect to come out of this. So this is the second book. It's a companion novel to Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This one is the main girl character is from Part of Your World's best friend. She's a doctor. This is like a workplace romance. Jacob is the new doctor. I don't know what their title is, but he's the new one in Brianna's hospital. And he gets up on the wrong foot with everyone because he comes off very mean, doesn't talk to anyone. He, everything's going wrong for him. And in Brianna's point of view, when she meets him, he's like, we don't like him. We don't want him here. And then you get Jacob's first point of view and you realize it's way deeper than that. On the outside, it looks like he doesn't want to talk to anyone and he's to himself and just like doesn't want to be there. But really he has extreme social anxiety. He fears rejection. He can't like speak to people and judgment and all this type of things going on in his head that you don't see on the outside. So right off the bat, I loved him. I loved the representation of the anxiety and just, I felt so seen reading 
this because I, I can relate to him in so many ways. And it was just so amazing seeing Brianna and his relationship kind of grow because like I said, he can't really go up to people. Like he couldn't go up to Brianna and just like speak to her. They start chatting, I guess you could say, with notes, sending notes to each other, which I thought was just the sweetest thing in, in the entire world. Like it was just so cute the way that happened. And then slowly but surely their relationship grew and stuff. And I loved Brianna because she would just immediately stick up for Jacob. It doesn't matter who would say anything about him or whatever. And Jacob's never had that really. Like he doesn't really talk about his feelings or anything because he can't. He has a lot of anxiety. But Brianna saw that and saw that in him and just helped him so much. I will say I gave this four stars though because I think the end of it, I guess the last like 85%, 90% of the book, I didn't really love what was going on and where the plot went. But I absolutely loved their story, the characters and the relationship and everything that happened throughout this book. Like it was just so nice to see the representation. And also just, I loved the characters. Also a very easy read. I love her writing. Her writing is just so quick and easy. Next I read Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. This was her new release of the summer. Such an anticipated read. I was so excited to read this. I ended up giving this three stars, I think. So Fern has this boyfriend and they live by like this lake and it's pretty town, but she stays there over the summer to help her mom run the inn that she owns on the lake and her boyfriend's there. But she goes to school in the city part of wherever they are. She's loving the city. She doesn't want to go back to the small town of the lake. This is past and present timeline. So in the past timelines, you get her last day in the city before she has to go back and she meets Will and Will is kind of like this artist painting a mural in the coffee shop she works at and they end up spending that whole night together. Then in present day, Will comes back to the inn and is like, your mom gave me a job here before she passed away and Fern is like, what? You met my mom? It's like, I think 10 years in the future when they meet up again. Back in the day, they spent that night together and Fern was like, meet me next year, a year from today at the inn over the summer and whatever. The year goes by, Will doesn't show up. So that's why in present day when he shows up 10 years later, she's like, well, where were you? And I like the essence of that. I like the premise of them spending the day together, meeting up a year later, but I just didn't think it was portrayed the way I would have liked it. The little blurred lines between them I didn't like. I just felt very uncomfortable, so I couldn't connect with them back in the day. I didn't enjoy their story. I couldn't see how that 12 hours they spent together, I don't know how many hours it was, I made that up, but the hours that they spent together, I just could not see the way that they connected. Like, I just couldn't feel it. The past timeline, I didn't love. The present timeline, I will say, I didn't love it that much, but I, I actually enjoyed them as they were older, better than the past. Yeah, this one just fell flat for me. I didn't love it. I was really excited for it, but I didn't connect with it, I don't think. Then I read Heartless by Marissa Meyer, and this is basically the Queen of Hearts, if you know from Alice in Wonderland, her origin story, kind of like a retelling of how she became the Queen of Hearts. This is about Catherine, and she is set to met the king. Met the king? No. She's set to marry the king, but she's kind of avoiding that because she has met the jest, who's now the king's jest, and she's having feelings for him, but she can't be with the jest, obviously, because her parents want her to marry the king. She can't do that there's this other plot where she really wants to open a bakery and I think the pacing of this was a little bit weird to me I just feel like the way it flowed from her wanting to open a bakery to the jest and the king and everything I did end up giving it a four stars just because I loved her like imagination of this retelling like it was very magical and fantasy and obviously Alice in Wonderland-esque so this is definitely a fantasy if you haven't really read many fantasies you can definitely go into this and it's just so easy to read it's YA there's no like terms you have to learn or like world building it's just very easy and simple and it's just like a fun story to go along. I loved the elements that she took from Alice in Wonderland and put into this, but I just didn't really connect with the jest and her and the ending. Like, none of it really spoke to me, but I gave it a four because I just absolutely loved the creativity of this and the fairy tale-ness of it and, like, all of those factors and the story. And I loved that. I just didn't connect with it. I don't know. I have a weird, weird feelings with this book, but I did enjoy it. I think I had too high of expectations because people were saying this is like their favorite book ever and like all this stuff. So I had high hopes for it and it wasn't really met, but it wasn't bad. You know, I don't know if that made sense. Anyway, after that, I read Happy Place, which was actually our book club book of the month. I was so excited to read this because after reading Beach Read, giving it five stars, I was like, okay, okay, there is hope. I also was seeing everyone reading this. People were crying, quotes were being posted everywhere, and I was waiting to get this delivered. And before you go and comment and ask where I got this paperback version, I got it from Book Depository before they closed down. I don't know who sells the paperback now. It's a bigger version. Like, look at Beach Read compared to it. Wait, it's definitely bigger. This is about Harriet and Wynne, and it's dual timeline. So you get when Harriet and Wynne met, they were kind of like roommates in college. They had like the same friend group, but they kind of missed seeing each other. She went to study abroad and like 
like all this stuff so they finally met when all of their friends took their annual trip to one of their best friends in the friend group Sabrina's like family lake house in Maine. Wynn comes to pick her up they go to the lake house they spend the summer together and then they end up like being roommates and like growing a connection and everything like that and then you get the present timeline where it's their last summer at the lake Sabrina's father is selling it but their friend group doesn't know that Wynn and Harriet actually broke up a few months ago they were engaged to be married and they ended the engagement and no one knows that they didn't want to tell anyone for different reasons but they have to spend the week or whatever there pretending that they're still dating in front of their friends so they don't ruin the last trip so that's basically the premise of the story and I know saying that and saying that out loud it sounds very like surface level rom com -y, friends to lover not friends lovers ex exes to lovers second chance but when I read this it felt so much more I don't know what Emily Henry put into this book look I tabbed it I don't tab. The annotations that I have throughout this book are unreal. The writing, the metaphors, the quotes, the characters, the development, and everything, I just absolutely ate it up. Whatever she put in here, I ate up. And I feel like one character I could relate to in literally any book that I have read in my entire life that's a lot of books, is Harriet. I could connect and relate to Harriet in so many different ways, so I ended up giving this five stars. I feel like this was so much more than a romance story. I feel like it's um navigating your life after college and your friends and going separate ways, but also like trying to maintain relationships with partners and your friendships and your, your jobs that you want to do and like places and like trying to figure out your life in that way, but also having communication and, and realizing that you can't like hold things in. You have to communicate with everyone. Like if you want things to work, you have to communicate. Harriet and Wynn in the beginning, I will say they, the, the present day, it took me a little bit to connect with them and then realize how much they truly do like love each other. And I also will say in the past timeline, I was obsessed with the way they met. Like I literally absolutely love it. Their banter was unmatched. Emily Henry writes amazing banter. Two five-star Emily Henry books in this wrap-up. Who would have thunk? Thought? I don't know. Then I read Our Final Love Song by N.S. Perkins. This is actually an arc that I got sent. It comes out this month, June 30th, so if you are interested, definitely read it. I ended up giving this four stars. You get in the beginning, their relationship, they started dating when they were like 17, they were so in love, and now you get present day, it's years later, and it's their anniversary, and Jamie is stuck with his music, doing his own musical thing, and, and forgets their anniversary, and Emma's like, listen, this is the last straw. But the problem is that the next day is they go to their musical camp, little school thing that they go to every year. Literally feels like Camp Rock, because they like study music and they have like a final jam and it's like literally game rock so she's like this is the final straw like we're done we can go to the camp together but like that's it like i can't do this they get to the camp and it's actually a year in the past and now they're stuck half broken up with people that think that they're still in love and in the past where everything was fine and now they have to work together because they're the only two that are stuck in the past to figure out how to get out of it while also trying to figure out their relationship jamie's trying to show emma that he loves her and like all this stuff really interesting storyline i've never read a second chance that was like a time travel also the camp rock setting i give it four because i didn't really connect with like the musical theme of it it was still fun like i wish i read this like on a lakeside because it like gave that setting gave that vibe it's a perfect summer read but this one's dual point of view which was nice too yeah if you're interested it comes out this month then i read powerless by elsie silver I love this book so much. I love this series so much. I cannot express the love I have for Chestnut Springs and Elsie Silver. Powerless is the third book in this series. This one is about Jasper and Sloane. The first two are about brothers that are in Chestnut Springs, but this one is about Jasper, who is Bo, one of the brothers' best friends, and he grew up with the Eaton boys, and he's been with them since he was so young. But the crumbs you get of Jasper in the first two books are like, literally like I was eating them up because he's like this sad boy and he has this like past that you're trying to figure out what happened to him like why is he so broken so i was so excited to get to his book and figure out what was going on but then the crumbs you get between sloan because sloan is the eaton boy's cousin so she spent their childhood together with jasper and everyone growing up and they've always had this thing for each other but it's never worked out okay flash forward to present time sloan's getting married to someone else who's a complete a-hole and now Jasper is going to the wedding and it's like this whole thing and so it's childhood friends lovers between the two of them and you kind of see their relationship but I have to say if you love Lucy Scores writing you will absolutely eat up Elsie Silver's writing it's so fast-paced the banter is hilarious the storyline is fun and this the relationships are insane I I'm obsessed with Jasper. Jasper is my favorite, one of my favorite book boyfriends in the entire world. Loved it so much. I annotated, I tabbed. I'm obsessed with Sloan and Jasper like so much. Here's your sign to read it. Okay. Also, wait, didn't say that Sloan is also a professional ballerina and her parents are just like on top of her, like want her to be with this guy because like kind of like a transactional marriage, you know what I mean? And she's just always had a thing for Jasper and I... 
I can't. I loved it so much. Also, Jasper's a hockey player. Can I add that? And his basically his family lives in Chestnut Springs. So you get the, the country vibe. You get a hockey player and hockey games and you get their relationship and banter and you get her as a ballerina. What more could you want? It's so, so good. Then I read Indigo Ridge by Daphne Perry. This is another small town, so I was really excited to read this, but this one also has a little mystery involved, which I was so excited for, like a romance mystery. Again, what more can you ask for? But basically, this is about Winslow, who becomes the new, I think, chief of police, yeah, in Montana, Quincy, Montana. But when she gets there, she meets, what's his name? Griffin Eden. And the Eden's family is like the main family of the town. She spends a night with Griffin because Griffin thinks that she's just coming through town and she thinks that Griffin is like a tourist or whatever. They don't really know each other, but they spend the night together and they wake up the next day. A body is found on the Eden's property and he sees and finds out that Winslow is a new chief of police. So she goes onto his property and is like, I Asking all these questions her trying to figure that out ask questions and be like what's going on but then you also get coming into Griffin's life and trying to figure out not a relationship but like slowly spending time together and all of it mixing together I ended up giving this 3.75 stars I didn't really connect with their relationship too much I feel like it was very interesting because the way that it was being put out they weren't having conversations they would just like start hanging out with each other and start like spending more and more time together and I feel like there wasn't really a conversation about their relationship or anything it just kind of happened I did like the mystery a lot I guess like a little part of it but the other part I did not and it was just like so intense so adrenaline rushing is that a word is that a phrase I loved her writing I will say it was flowed so well and it was really easy and really fast quick read I love the romance and mystery put together I just didn't really connect with the characters it did what it needed to do I just didn't really connect as much as I wanted to then I actually read another fantasy this is one for my enemy by Olive Blake the cover of this is seriously to die for and then on the inside you have the two families that the story is about but this was actually really fun it was my first modern day fantasy this takes place in New York City and it's basically about two witch families they both own storefronts and they're rival families one family is the Antonovas which are all sisters I think there's seven sisters and then the mom and then you have the federal which are three brothers and the dad. One of my favorite parts about this book is it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Don't we love that? We love the drama. We love the tragedy. We love the modern day. We love the witches. It's so much fun. The quotes in here are beautiful. It's like very action packed and very like drama. And I loved it so much. Like it was so fun and interesting. I ended up giving this four stars. I don't know why I didn't give it five. I just didn't get that five star feeling, but it was just so much fun. I absolutely loved the Romeo and Juliet retelling within this story. Her writing is also so poetic at points. I loved it. So I need to read more of her book. I think the Atlas Six she's written. I need to read that. I don't know what it's about, but I love her writing. So. Then I just read The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez, and this one is the second book by her I read this month. This is part of another companion little series. This is the first one in the little series that it is. So Kristen and Josh actually had this little meet cute in the beginning, which I didn't really mind. It was actually kind of cute. Josh just moved to California where Kristen lives because he's a firefighter there, and his best friend is a firefighter. His best friend's fiance is Sloane, I'm pretty sure, and Sloane's best friend is Kristen. So the two of them are best friends with this couple, but the issue is that Kristen has a boyfriend who is actually, I think he's in the military or something, but he's never home. He's only home for like two weeks at a time, so so she hires Josh to help out because she has like this dog business and she needs like a carpenter to make the stairs or something like that. It's a really cute little storyline that she has, but she hires Josh for a little because her carpenter just quit or something for another job. So now she's spending time with Josh, but he's in the friend zone because she has a boyfriend, but they're spending time together. They're connecting their chemistry is like out of this world and like their banter is amazing. They're getting along so well and her boyfriend is coming home soon. And then you get kind of that, which is kind of like iffy for me. I always feel like those blurred lines are a little bit, I don't know. Eventually you keep going and one of the main problems why they can't be together no matter if her boyfriend comes home if they break up or anything is that Kristen can't have kids she has something going on with like her uterus and I forgot what it's called but Josh one of the things he brings up frequently is how big of a family he wants and he wants to be a family man he wants to be a father he wants like 10 kids and all this stuff so that's like the main point you have that kind of issue and I think this is where my rating comes in I gave this a 3.75 because at some point throughout the book and like closer to the end I wanted to shake Kristen and just be like let this boy make a decision for himself it was getting annoying I will say at that point and also I feel like the story kind of took a little bit of a turn and I know this is the setup for the second book after this but I feel like it focused so much on like the side characters within their relationship that they couldn't really focus on Kristen and Josh I mean I still enjoyed it I love her writing it goes so quick and it flows so well like you don't realize you're reading like 50 pages so quickly but just like the storyline got a little bit frustrating to me but it was still really good and I'm really excited to read the second one from how this book ended there's also a book that I like low-key DNF I would say a soft DNF because I'm definitely gonna get back to it but I started 
started reading Children of Fallen Gods. This is the second book in the War of Lost Hearts series. I think I got halfway or about 40 something percent. It was really slow, like painfully slow. I was buddy reading it with a bunch of people in our Discord and I like low key stopped reading it and everyone kept going. But we all had the same feelings that it was slow in the beginning. But right when you hit the halfway point, they said that it gets crazy and I saw like them going crazy about what was happening. So that has motivated me to not DNF this and keep going. Plus I love Chris's writing. The writing was good. It wasn't the writing. It felt so slow and I didn't really want to read a book like this. I feel like at that point I wanted like a quick romance and it was just so discouraging how big this was and how slow I was reading it. So I'm definitely going to read this eventually, but I don't know. So those are all the books that I read in May. I don't really know how many books that was. Let's see. I read 11. I think that's 11 books. I'm currently reading two. DNF to one. There's a lot going on this month, but let's talk about the TBR I have for June. This is my birth month. This is the start of the summer months where I start reading a lot more. I might not read all of these, but these are on my TBR. Our Scorching Summer by Kels and Denise Stone. Nico is her best friend's brother-in-law. He's strictly off limits. They're just friends. One out of character decision later, she finds herself on an international adventure with him. I think it's like a vacation romance between the two of them. Something like that. I don't know. The cover's cute. It's giving summer. It literally says summer on it. So I'm excited for a good beach read. And then I have a Lisa Jewell book. This is actually a mystery. I found you. But this one I wanted to read because it takes place like on the beach and a mystery on the beach. I feel like that's so fun. I feel like when I read a mystery in the summer, it kind of has to give off those vibes. It has to take place around a summer vibe. I don't know. But this one, I think a man goes missing or a man is found on this woman's property on the beach or something like that. And he has no idea how he got there or like anything that's going on. I read Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell and I absolutely loved her writing. So I'm excited about this. And I need a little mystery to splash in here. Okay, you guys are going to be like, girl, you get this off your TBR or read it. So <laughs> I'm going to keep it on my TBR. We'll see. I think I'm just intimidated by the size of it. I think that's really the only thing because a romance this long just scares me. I think once I start it, I'll be good. But just like it's getting there. It's reaching for it that I can't do. But it's on my TBR still. So we'll see. This is also, by the way, Final Offer by Lauren Asher. It's the third and last book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. This is about the third brother, Callahan, and his relationship. So we shall see if I can get to that. Then I have Juniper Hill by Daphne Parry, the one that's after Indigo Ridge. This one is about, I think, one of the Edens. I think his brother Knox and then this girl, Memphis, who arrives from New York City with her child. So it's like a city girl coming into the small town. Knox is a chef. We'll see how it goes. I heard this is people's like fan fave of the series. Definitely want to read that one. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This one, I'm honestly just reading because of the hype that's been put out there. I'm going to be so honest, I'm not in the mood for a fantasy, but if I don't read this soon, I'm going to feel the FOMO even more than I already do. If you're wondering where I got the paperback too, it's an arc. <laughs> I did not realize I had an arc. I'm so dumb. I didn't realize I got an arc and I have the other version, the hardcover with the little dragons on it too. And I just, I don't know how I forgot that this was delivered to me. Have to read this. This is about like a girl that goes to like a dragon school thing and she has to, I don't know, get a dragon. <laughs> literally have no idea, but I've seen TikToks. I've seen Instagram posts. TikToks, like literally every other TikTok is what I mean when I say TikToks. And I need to see the hype. I need to see if I'm going to like it. So it's on my TBR. I'm not in the mood for it. So that might not be good, but we'll see. And then I have Rewrite Our Story by Kate Singleton. This is actually another small town, little country romance. And it's just, that's just my vibe. Country romances, small town. That's what I need right now. Best friend's older brother, second chance. I think something like that. I don't know. I'm excited. That's all. Last book is Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. This is the companion novel after When in Rome, which I actually read at the end of April into May, I think. Yeah. This one actually just came out, so I'm excited. The cover is so cute, but this is about Noah from the first one's sister, Annie. Annie's like the shy sister. She lives in this small, small town of Rome, Kentucky, and she thinks that she can't really find anyone because everyone knows each other. Everyone knows each other's business, but then in comes Amelia from the first one, who's this pop star, her bodyguard, who now is helping Annie find love. I'm so excited. This is actually our book club book of June too, so I'm so excited to read this for everyone, which leads me into my Patreon updates of the book club. So I have added new tiers to the Patreon, so if you are interested of trying it out, there's a lot more options for you to see if you want to. We have a $1 tier. The $1 tier, you'll see Patreon updates, like the posts on Patreon, and you'll see the books that we choose for each month, and you'll be able to join in on Patreon discussion comments and stuff like that. You won't be able to pick the book or like see a Discord or anything like that, but you'll be able to see the books we're reading and join in on discussions together on there. So that's $1 a month. If you just want to like get a glimpse into the book club, if you want to like grade in the future, or if you just want to stay there, like you can just try it out. And then we have the tier that's always been there, the $5 tier. Here. This one, you get the Discord access, early access videos, Patreon updates. You get to vote for our books. We can buddy read in the Discord. There is monthly readathons. There's a lot going on. All that information is in the description. And then I added a third tier, which is an $8 tier. This one, you'll get a monthly reading vlog of me reading our monthly book. The second tier and the first tier, you get my review and my ratings in just like a written out form. But in the third tier, you also get along with that a reading vlog of it. We're going to do like monthly giveaways in the Discord, do video suggestions for me. Lots of things going on. All of that information is in the Patreon little 
link in the description if you want to check it out. There's also a seven day free trial for the $5 one. If you want to try it out for a week, see if you like it or not, and then just like decide after that. But yeah, this is our book for June. So if you end up choosing one of the months, you can read this along with us. If you choose the $8 one, you'll get the reading vlog of me reading this. A lot going on in there, but come join us. Shout out to my Discord besties and my Patreon besties if you're watching this. I know you guys are watching this. So hi everyone. I can't wait to read this with you guys. I don't know why I'm laughing, but yeah, shout out Discord, Patreon besties. Come join us. We have so much fun. We go, we go all day long. That's my TBR. That's my wrap up. Oh, oh, wait. Wait, I want to read Ellen Hildebrand's new book, The Five Star Weekend. Add that to my TBR. I don't know what it's about, but it's Ellen Hildebrand's new book, and obviously I'm going to read it on the beach. So maybe I'll read a few of hers over the summer, over June. We'll see. Okay, now that's everything that I've read and my TBR and my Patreon updates. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you did. Let me know what you read, what's on your TBR. And we're going to have a great month. It's June. It's my birth month. It's Gemini season. We're going to have a great month. I love you all. Have an amazing day, and I will see you hopefully in the next one. <laughs> Goodbye.